Most American narrow gauge railroads are known for their unique steam locomotives which roam their system, with narrow gauge meaning that there is 3 feet, in this case, between the rails of the track, instead of the standard 4 feet 8.5 inches between the rails. Such examples include the Durango and Silverton, the Rio Grande Scenic, and the Southern Pacific, which acquired the Carson and Colorado Railroad. It is generally rare for these narrow gauge railroads to make it into the 1950s, with the increasing rivalry of road transportation, and even more so if they roster a diesel locomotive, considered modern technology at the time. The Southern Pacific is one of few examples of a narrow gauge railroad which not only lasted through the test of time and rivalries for a considerable amount of time, while most of the lines were extinct decades earlier, but also rosters a single diesel locomotive to do most of their work within their last years of operation. Back in the mid to late 1800s, most narrow gauge railroads were constructed in order to transport goods, especially minerals such as gold and silver, in the mineral rich western regions of the United States. One of these mineral mining roads was the Carson and Colorado Railway, running between Carson City, Nevada and Killer, California, which began operations in 1883 with only one locomotive, a Baldwin Locomotive Works 440 named the Candelaria, given the number one. Many years later, after the Carson to Colorado acquired more narrow-gauge Baldwin locomotives, the Virginia and Truckee Railroad, the parent company of the CNC, sold the line to the Southern Pacific Company in 1900 and was commonly known as the Keeler Branch. This branch line in particular lasted well into the next few decades with the discoveries of gold and silver along the line, thus bringing in much profit for the Southern Pacific. However, the line started to lose business over time as more and more portions of the route were abandoned and more of their roster was being scrapped. Despite this, the Southern Pacific was in the process of dieselization throughout their railroad, and they eventually looked at the Keeler Branch, at the time consisting of three remaining steam locomotives, and only two of which were operable, but needed repairs. Since the railroad's Bakersfield shop started to focus on diesel maintenance rather than steam, abandoning the line would be unwise at the time, and converting it to standard gauge would be too expensive. So the railroad's best option was to dieselize the route, as the railway ordered a new narrow gauge variant of the 70 ton switcher from General Electric in October 1953. The 50 tonner was given the number one and arrived on the railroad one year later on October 12, 1954. A few days later, a special train with Southern California chapter and railway and locomotive historical society members, railroad dignitaries, and press reporters left Los Angeles Union Station led by GS4 locomotives 4449 and 4447 and later 10 wheelers 2335 and 2350, arriving at Oweno, California in October 16, to watch the dedication ceremonies of the Diesel No. 1, otherwise known as X1, since all movements on the Killer Branch at this time were considered extras. As engine number 18 sat next to number 1 with numerous railroads, historical society, and town officials, Assistant General Manager W.D. Lamprich, sorry for any mispronunciation, pointed out that of the four remaining narrow gauge railroad lines in the U.S., only the Southern Pacific thus far was modernizing its branch with, with diesel locomotives. He later announced that out of 500 entries in the company's sponsor contest to name this locomotive, the name Little Giant had been selected as the name for number one. As Walter Thrall christened the engine with a cardboard champagne bottle filled with talc, the champagne of the Owens Valley, as well as the railroad's major product. Steam locomotive number 9, no not that one, pulled into Omleno and pulled the last steam hauled train along the route with engineer Walter Ferguson and fireman George Murray as dieselization was complete as number 18 was later sold to the Indio County Museum in Independence, California, while number 9 was kept as an emergency backup locomotive. After this point, number 1 continued to be the main and only locomotive for all services along the route, with number 9 occasionally being used for service while number 1 was away for maintenance. Certain examples include prime mover problems in 1956 and numerous occasions when it was sent to the Bakersfield shops for regular repairs, and was later repainted into the gray and orange livery similar to that of most Southern Pacific diesels of the late 1950s. But sadly, this line was slated for abandonment in, in 1960 as number one, also known as One Spot, pulled the last train on April 29th and was used to tow the remaining equipment from the railroad to Laws, California where it remains to this day and later to rip up the rails of the line. After this solemn move only after years of joyous ceremonies, Little Giant was purchased in 1961 by the Pan American Engineering Company, 
a locomotive dealer in Dallas, Texas, who sold number one to the Compania Minera de Cananera, Cananera, a copper mining company south of the American border in northern Mexico, and was assigned the number 61-8. It was later converted to standard gauge where it works for a few years, and was last seen in Cananera, Mexico around 2010. Though it is unknown where this locomotive is currently located, or if it exists, this one-of-a-kind locomotive helped serve the Keeler branch well during its last few years of existence, as it was one of the first lines to bring modernization to an American narrow gauge railroad. Thank you all for watching this episode of Remarkable Engines. This engine is unique not only because it is different than its 70-tonner counterpart, thus making it the only 50-tonner on the railroad's roster, but also because of how despite signs of slowing down due to road competition, certain railroads still brought modern technology to nearly every branch of their system. The story of this unique locomotive's existence and the railroad it worked for is not all doom and gloom, as both Slim Princesses, or rather the nicknames for engines number 9 and 18, have been preserved, as well as number 18 being restored for excursions recently under the Durango and Silverton Railroad, and there are also talks of portions of the Carson in Colorado being restored in order to have the Southern Pacific Heritage brought back on the original route. Regarding the series, I know that this is not Santa Fe engine number 1010. The episode for this engine is being pushed back to July 9th, 2020, as after doing research on the engine and its history, I decided to do this specific episode for the 115th anniversary for the Scott Special, the famous record-setting train which 1010 pulled back in 1905. With this in mind, the next engine to be covered in the series will be Alaska Railroad number 751, the only bi-level DMU on their roster. Thank you again for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Have a good day.